where I inspire you with timeless classic prim looks from my boudoir. And as always, as a reminder, please stick around until the end for the mini photo shoot that I provide for you at the conclusion of every episode. And you might ask, who is this lovely beauty sitting to my left? Yes, that is right. In addition to being my style muse, she is also my mini me, my design diva, my everything. I actually have a nickname for her. I call her my brick house because as you can tell, she's so absolutely stunning. I'm a woman of many names. Many names, many <laughs> names. But besides all of that, I'm so very proud to call her my daughter. But yes, she is definitely my style of muse and has been largely responsible for how I've evolved over the years in terms of fashion and style. So I really wanted to have her here today because again, uh, in addition to being her mom, I really am impressed by her on so many levels. And with this being Women's History Month, who better to celebrate than the women closest to you in your life? And yes, she is my only biological daughter. Um, so I take great pride in showing her off and showing her around and taking the opportunity to brag on her whenever possible. Now we're going to talk about her style and her sense of fashion and all that has gotten her into that and how she actually evolved with becoming a fashion designer. Uh, in addition to, um, you would call it a um, seamstress. Yeah in addition to being an artist as well. Um, but I really wanted to go over what she's doing in her life right now and why I'm so very proud of her, uh, in addition to her impeccable sense of style and fashion. So in addition to being um, a beautiful young woman and my daughter, she is, as you can tell, um, we're both blushing and I'm gonna try to keep this as professional as possible because um, we can quickly devolve into <laughs> giggles and laughter because as you might imagine, like many mother daughters, we actually have our own inside language and um, we can uh, again, descend into giggles and um, our own inside speak. So I'll try to keep it as professional as possible. Um, professional, as we say. <laughs> we gotta limit our distractions. Limit the distractions, <laughs> limit the distractions. But yes, yes, yes. She is a mom. Yes. To um, our two grandchildren. Her two children um, are seven and six years old. Yes. And I am basically, um, um, just a little taken aback because and when I say seven and six years old, because I can't believe that they're actually seven and six yes. years old already, which was our reason I told you in one of my previous videos that we actually relocated here to be closer right. to them. And I can't believe that it's been this long already. It, it has, seems like time has flown by, right. right? The amount of time you guys have been here has been long and short all at the same, at the same time. time exactly <laughs> because life is lifing life and is a lot life. has happened since you guys have been here right right so right. it it has definitely been a whirlwind of the mm -hmm. last couple of years yeah. but um they have been good years good so yeah. so yes yeah being a wonderful mom i often say that she is a better mom than i was um, and I wasn't a bad mom. I'm very proud of where she has ended up in life. And um, I couldn't be more ecstatic with what she's currently doing in life. But she's such a nurture, nurturing, loving person. And in addition to, of course, you love your children, but I like her. And that oh. is more important <laughs> than anything to me is to really like um, your children. So, and I love hanging out with her. And in addition to, I'll get into all the style stuff in a moment, but in addition to being a, an incredible mom, she's also an incredible wife and she is an incredible um, real estate professional. I didn't want to say real yes. estate agent because she's a real estate professional. And I really yes. wanted to big up her um, during this Women's History Month because she recently, this month, closed on her first $2 million sale. And we were so very proud of her. 
She, yes. uh, let's see, it's been two years since you've embarked on uh, your real estate journey. Uh, yeah. The start was, it's been three years. Yeah. But I've, there's been a transition and it takes you a while to get, to hit your stride, to really get your stride going and to find a groove with it and to really be um, gaining experience. So I consider to it a full two years that I've actually been practicing and selling yeah. um, versus the time it took just to become licensed, right. which is a whole journey in itself. But actually um, buying and selling and working with clients of different price points and um, journeys, it's been a full two years. Absolutely. So in addition to currently being a full-time mom, wife, and um, real estate professional, just a little more background on her. She majored um, in dance in university uh, in Colorado, where we're from. And um, she was an incredible dancer. And it's really strange. You know how they say that um, parents have a tendency to live vicariously through their children because I always wanted to be or used to pretend to be a dancer as a little yes. girl. And um, I birthed a dancer. And I always wanted to be a singer. Yes. <laughs> but she came to But I am horrible. She, she came to <laughs> So she's the dancer and I'm the singer. So she wanted to be the singer. I'm the singer. I wanted to be the dancer and she's the yes. dancer. Um, but she put dancing down. Yeah. Briefly moved to, did you switch to interior design? You were thinking about it. It was, it, it. I kind of flowed from, <clears throat> I tried to stay within the arts. Yeah. So at first I transitioned into art history. Yes. And then from there, at that point I started helping Miss Davis. Yes. So mm -hmm. it, art history. Fashion wise. Well, yes. Yeah. Art history became a thing of the past very right. quickly and design took hold very fast. And so that's yeah how we got there. Right. <laughs> And that was great for me because at that time I was finishing my master's degree yes. and starting to get busy um, mm -hmm. singing operatically. Yes. And she was getting serious about her design. And I just want to say also, uh, a lot of people are not aware, and I was made aware only through her and her studies, that a lot of fashion designers, um, either they um, sketch well, mm -hmm. but don't sew, right. or they sew, but don't sketch. Right. And then actually constructing and conceiving a garment from what do you call it? Muslin? Muslin, yes. Um, from muslin to um, actual creation. She does it all. Yes. And one of the benefits that I have, have had as a, a performing artist is she used to travel with me and basically serve mm -hmm. as my stylist on the road. So I was very blessed in that sense. And in addition to her making some of yeah. my gowns for the recital stage and the operatic stage, um, a couple of which we're going to, and when I say couple, I mean, actually mean a few. So three that you'll see here up on the screen um, that I'll be styling for you that I'm super proud of. And I've actually worn all of these. Um, I took um, this one in particular that I'm going to show you that we'll, we'll go through in a moment, but, um, all of these I have worn or she has worn, she, she's wearing <laughs> one of them now because usually when she makes something for herself, I'd be like, Oh, Lex, can you, and I call her Lex. Her name is Alexis Asseray Turner, Alexis Asseray Turner. Um, I also want to say that her middle name is my name, Erica spelled backwards. You Uniqueness. Know. <laughs> um, so yes. <laughs> Um, um, everything that she makes for herself or would make for herself, yes. I would always see it and be like, Lex, can you make one for me? Oh my God, I love that. So she is wearing one of the designs today that I'm going to be popping up here on the screen to style for you shortly. But show that, and I actually have the, the pictures that you um, took in this garment as well. Yes. There's one that you have on fo on Facebook in your arms. Yes. It's beautiful. Yes. She takes great photos, by the way. I'll <laughs> pop some up of, uh, of, of us in different scenarios and different locations. That was the shoot I did for this. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. But it is stellar. It is a beautiful garment. Um, and before we go any further, I want to ask her, what would you say your three design aesthetic words would be? Like, what words would you attribute to your design aesthetic? 
Definitely monochrome. She 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 loves a good. I love a good monochrome look. One color palette. It makes life simple. It's easy. I don't have to fuss about what to pair with it. I don't have to fuss with making sure the hues are correct, which leads me into my next, which would be functional. As a mom of two young children, I do not have time for too many other things that requires me to have to think about more than I need to for any given task. And I, I want to just get what I can, make it work and be on my way. So definitely functional. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, tailoring. You cannot beat a well-structured garment. Sure, loungewear at leisure is always fun. It's comfortable, but you can still be comfortable in a well-made, well-constructed, well-fitted garment as well. And it makes you feel and look more put together, even if the rest of your look might be a little bit more casual. Mm -hmm. So I love all of that, which would sum up my design aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And why do you think that you are so good? Do you think it's just because you're a creative that you're so good at fashion and style? Or do you think it's something you just kind of happened into? Like what brought you to fashion? Well, you kind of answered it and touched on it a minute ago when you said I would make something and then you would want it. And that's literally it. Uh -huh. It was creating pieces that I couldn't find, that I wanted for myself, and that nine times out of ten, I could make much better for myself. And for a cheaper price and point. And for a cheaper price point. And I realized as I worked retail, um, I could see what was trendy. I could see how things were made. And I knew that if I had the proper teaching and understanding of construction, that I could very easily, with a little bit of time and patience, create something a lot better than what I saw in the rack mm -hmm. that would last a lot longer than one or two washes. So a few things. We went through three sewing machines. <laughs> <laughs> well, three sewing machines and a serger. And a serger, exactly. We were yeah. about to go through a fourth, but yeah, baby started coming. Yes. Um, sewing machines, um, books. I went and purchased one Christmas, every yeah. fashion book I thought she would need to really do the doggone thing. And to just learn, I yeah. think, was the main takeaway from right. From books and we went to a lot of museums we did a lot of exhibits yeah and that's probably really where i was most inspired mm -hmm. especially from that um, our vegas trip yes we did a um fashion merchandising trip yes. to las vegas um the year after you graduated high school yes. or the, the, the year you graduated high school, because yeah. that was what you wanted for your senior yes. trip. And it ended up, we ended up going to California and then and we so, did. On. so, so you could it dance. was all in a very short amount of time. So yeah. we actually took a girl's road trip because we lived in Colorado at the time, um, road trip for mm -hmm. a fashion um, merchandising uh, and e-commerce yeah. uh, for the people that were just at the inception yeah. of e-commerce online boutiques and what well and remember you. i still danced when we and, were in california <laughs> exactly so she was uh, again she majored in dance in university so um during that trip to vegas for this conference this fashion merchandising conference um we drove over because it's only like mm -hmm. a, a four-hour drive yes. And I won't say what hotel we stayed at. Let's not talk. Let's about not it. discuss it. Um, it was a nice hotel, but for the sake of um, we did it <laughs> political. Yeah, um, um, we'll keep that to ourselves. At the time, it wasn't a problem. It wasn't a problem at the time. Anyway, we drove over to Vegas, yeah. and she wanted to dance for this really famous well choreographer. Known. Yeah, the studio at that time, and maybe it still is, was very popular, and. Um, all the who's who dancers would. From so you think you could dance. So you think you can dance, which I also which did. Which she also did. <laughs> she did. So you think you can dance. And you got right to the final round, the final semifinal. Round before casting. Before casting. Yes. Exactly. We were so <laughs> I still have the video from that. Yeah. As well. So all the dance competitions, dance studios, um, 
LA, between LA and Las Vegas was where you wanted to be to really see if dance if you can make it right and it was it was like my fame moment i know i want to live <laughs> and so i i did it i said you know i'm i know i'm a great dancer but i'll know if i'm that great if i can compete against the, the best one, of the, the best the best of the best and they were happened to all be from that studio and to know that i did it and did it well as to receive acknowledgement for that just coming from little old Colorado yeah. <laughs> meant a lot. And so at that point I said, you know what? My job. Right. <laughs> On to the next thing. Right. <laughs> because even in when she was in school, from the moment that she was a, just to be a braggart a little bit more, from the time that she was a little girl, I always encouraged her to try everything. This yes. child has had every animal known to man. And I ripped them apart um, and sewed them back together. Not real, again. not the real animals. Well, no, no, <laughs> never. But but we you had animals. every like you had <laughs> yes. hamsters. You had two pi two pigeons. Yes. Um. No cockatoos. Cockatiels. Yes. Two cockatiels, frogs, fish. Yes. You name it, she has had it. No cats though. No cats. No cats. Dogs. No. Yes. Yes. Um. You. Um played pretty much every sport there was yes. to play basketball, baseball, softball, mm -hmm. cheerleading, competitive cheerleading, mm -hmm. cheerleading in high school. I swam. Um, you swam. Um, she qualified for junior Olympics and yes. gymnastics. Um, so she was always busy. We kept yes. her busy, yeah. but we let her try things, even if she didn't continue on. Cause you know, you have to try things to decide what's for you mm -hmm. and what's not for you. You know, you keep what works and you throw back what does not. Yes. So we were always encouraging in that way until she hit her stride and decided, you know, what she really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But I always knew that she was going to be an excellent mother because of her disposition. And she also was a nanny in our neighborhood and also had an affinity for children with special needs. Yes. Um, so, and she also worked for the before and after program in our community yeah. elementary elementary school. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it like a K through it was a uh, K junior through, high, right? It was at that time a K through junior high. Right. And the before and after program that was um, associated with the school. It, correct. It was actually the same one that I actually grew up with right. in elementary school. Right. So it was a good way to get involved and, and do what I loved at that time, which was being around children and helping them and helping them to learn and spend time with them. Um, after school can be tough for children. And I felt like that was a good way to use my time and, and learn what working was about in different fields. Yeah. So. And we were going to, we were trying to decide going back and forth between if we were, we were going to do a threesome and introduce you to our third generation. Um, <laughs> she would have stolen this show, she, but she would have, <laughs> she would have stolen this show. We would not have been able to no. get a word in edgewise. Um, because she is a, an absolute flower in bloom at this right. point. And she's super intuitive. She's super intelligent. And she's an empath. And she feels and she feels deeply. And she needs to express it. She wears it on her face at, at every moment, at every turn. So we're, we're saving her for a little later. And we didn't want to overwhelm her with this process. So I just wanted to introduce you to my main, my day one first and foremost, again, in celebration of this Women's History Month before we bid it adieu. So on to these fashions yes. behind us. And again, I'm going to be popping up video and um, stills of um, times that I've worn these for the, the items that I do not mm. actually style. I wanna start with this piece here. Oh, that's one of my favorites. I want to start with this piece here. Look at that. Yeah. I know you can't see the grandeur. You'll see you're you're, you're probably looking at it um, on the video that I present for you. But I actually did an entire photo shoot in this number. You want to pull the, the slacks out for me? Yes. The trousers. And you can't tell, but the texture on this baby is the design feature. 
Look at yes. that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And what would you call this material? It it, it does have stretch. It does to it, have stretch, but it's like a textured, almost honeycomb. Yes, with a, a hint of metallic, yeah, um, texture to it, which gives it character. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And this belting, I actually have the belt draped over the um the hanger here but this really substantial generous belting that really wraps around it yes. literally two or three times yes. but this piece is really it really um, a lot of her designs have like um um an eastern asian um sensibility to it i mentioned that because in high school she was about it about it when it came to, <laughs> came to eastern culture in high school do you remember that that, I still that international fair that you had to yes. wear something that was my introduction to culture <laughs> that was exactly <laughs> but you've always been if it wasn't Span yeah. um spanish yeah i i couldn't make the latino uh, community yes. because one of her best friends in junior high school yes. was a little latina a, a, a young lady that yes. lived across the street from us um, Nicole, Nicole, Nicole. Yes. but her thing became eastern asian yes. culture and she had this international fair at school that she had to mm -hmm. um, create something from that particular culture yes. and dress the part. So I went on this hunt for the dresses. Remember yes. the Chinese um, dress? Yes. Uh, what would you, the ones that folded on the side, that buttoned on the side? Yeah. The sheath. Yes. The Chinese sheath yes. that was more from the early um, 20th century, yes. like the 1920s. Right, exactly. Um, so we had to dress and we made um, the little rice bowls, the Chinese uh, rice bowls yes. with the, the chopsticks. I was so proud of Do myself. You that? Yes. I was too. And then we had to sell it at the fair. Yes. And take uh, the currency was also Correct. in the yen, the Chinese yen as well. Correct. So she's always loved. Both of us have a really yeah. um, intense, I think, affinity, love for yeah. and affinity for Eastern cultures. Right now, our thing is um, South Korean dramas. <laughs> and yes, we listen to Stephanie Sue. True. Yes. <laughs> bada bing, bada bing. <laughs> Yes, but we love South Korean historical yeah. costume dramas and the current dramas because they are just so good. Yes. So good. So, yes, we both have an affinity and have for some time yes. for Eastern Asian cultures, specifically the Joseon period into current day of the South Korean culture. So a lot of her designs really kind of, unless it was something specifically she was making mm -hmm. for me for a character mm -hmm. for the operatic stage. I also want to mention really quick, I made my Carmen debut, my operatic debut as Carmen from the opera Carmen um, during my um, grad school days at University of yes. Denver. And she choreographed the entire opera. I That's did. an entire opera. And if you know anything about opera, the opera Carmen is a four hour and 15 minute opera mm -hmm. if done in total. Mm -hmm. I'm on stage the entire time with the exception of about 15, 20 minutes. I have four costume changes. Yes. I'm dancing throughout pretty much. And she choreographed that debut for me. Yes. And I was so proud. And I have pictures of that. Oh. <laughs> the young man who played my Eskimo. Yeah. Remember mm -hmm. that picture that you took yes. with him standing? I still have that. Yes. I'll pop it up on the screen yes. for you. Um, but yes, back to there's just so much that I want you to know about her because she's that special to me. She means that much to me and she's just so stinking. We are definitely kindred spirits when it comes to being creatives, yeah. you know? Yes. So I really just wanted to share that with you, but back to the, the styling and the, the designs. Mm -hmm. I started here with this garment in particular because this suit was supposed to be the cover of my next album. That did not happen, has not happened and won't happen. Mm -hmm. Um, I did the entire photo shoot. Remember, mm -hmm. I had um, a tour mm -hmm. in the south of France yes. two years ago, coming out of COVID because that record should have been recorded going into COVID 2020. Mm -hmm. Everything shut down and it sat on the shelf for some time. Mm -hmm. Coming out of COVID, I had a tour planned for the south of France um, that went beautifully. 
but I just didn't feel it anymore. I didn't have it anymore. And I was ready really to spend time with my beautiful grands and my daughter here and just relax. The travel was getting to me. And I'm like, why do I have to? I've, and I really realized in the moment that, gosh, you've been doing this for 20 years. And my market, as I've said in previous episodes, is primarily abroad in Europe, um, in Western Europe. Um, and the travel was getting to me. And my last trip, mm -hmm. I caught COVID. Yes. And I was like, I'm tired. I'm tired yes. I can't do it. So this suit never saw the light of day until today. Because the pictures from that photo shoot, I'm going to put up pop up here for you so that you can see them. In addition to me styling it um, via video for you, mm -hmm. um, you'll see the, the photos here. I want you to tell me what you think. Though I don't care because this was made <laughs> at the hands of my child. Well, and this was actually created. Oh, that for me? As an inspiration from Game of Thrones. Oh, you never told me that. Yes. Look at that. See that right there? Alexis Asare Turner. Oh, pow. Okay, I'm, I'm done that. <laughs> I'm done being a bragger. Okay. And oh, you never told me yes, that. Yes, yes. Because as uh, Khaleesi kind of came <gasps> more so, so into her own and into becoming the mother dragon and really owning her power and owning her position as being leader of the, the free leader of mm -hmm. the dragons mm -hmm. um taking and owning her power and being free from men <laughs> right um she really started um embodying her dragons and as you see her character development throughout the last i say five to six seasons of game of thrones you see her wardrobe evolve into more of her dragon armor and I was just obsessed with it. And it, I just happened to walk through the fabric store and I said, that's, it's that right there. Yeah. That's it. And, and when I saw this material, yeah. I was like, oh my God, where did you get this material from? So I did actually wear this to a Christmas party once. You sure did. But that was it. Yeah. And then I snatched it. Yeah. <laughs> I snatched it. I was like, <laughs> Yeah. What do I need to do to get that yes. from you? Because I need to have yeah. that. Like that's got to be my cover mm -hmm. for my next record. Like right there. So as you can see, it, it there really is not anything like this. No, you won't find. You won't find it. And what are some of the other features on it? So to kind of go back to uh, my functionality uh, design aesthetic, everything I would create has to have pockets. Yeah. Um, in case. I don't want to use a handbag. Um, I've, I, I feel complete when I have pockets. Mm -hmm. And it makes for, it, it's, it just makes for completion in a, in a garment. And comfort. And, right? it's, and it's comfort. It's almost like a blanket. It's yeah. like that thing that you have to have to make you feel comfortable in what you're doing and what you're in. You know mm. that if you need to stick something somewhere, you're it's going to be one. on you. You don't have to worry about carrying it around. And of course, as a mom, we need pockets for pockets for pockets to put our <laughs> stuff in. And so it just makes sense that your most fashionable pieces have hidden pockets so that number one, it still is very uniform with the overall aesthetic and the line. And it's not drawing to or taking away from the overall design. And it, 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 there's nothing else to say. I know. It's just, <laughs> it, this is like a, a forever garment. Yeah. This is a classic. Again, you can pull this out in any uh, decade. To me, it yes. will work whatever the time period. Yes. I just absolutely, this is just stunning mm -hmm. to me and I'll forever love it. And it will definitely stay in my closet or in her wardrobe. <laughs> And so like, one of us needs it. It'll be vaulted somewhere. It'll be vaulted. <laughs> exactly. It'll, it'll be vaulted somewhere. Um, I think the next piece that I want to show is this one. Okay. Now you can't really tell yeah, by me holding it hard to... because it's so deconstructed. And it's asymmetrical. It's asymmetrical. So it doesn't hang well. Yes. On the hanger. On the hanger. Exactly. But once it's on... 
Yeah. You don't need anything else. And I'm going to make sure that I keep the video running for this one because you really, you don't have a sense of the right. garment on the hanger here, but on the video, I mean, it's just stellar. It's so comfortable. Uh, I've worn this one. She's worn this mm -hmm. one. Um, it's just, a, again, a forever piece. Yes. This is truly a classic silhouette. Yes. Truly a classic silhouette that you can wear this again in any decade. I would yes. have even worn this one in the 1920s during the jo Josephine Baker period, who's another icon and legend that has been of inspiration to the both of us. Yes, um, yes you remember that, that picture that you drew of Josephine Baker in the banana skirt? Yes. It's, I, where is it? I know I brought it with me mm. here. But it, it's a huge one. It's like an 11 mm -hmm. by 13 or something. She could draw her butt off. She could sketch her butt off as well. I'm just telling you. But yes, this one is a wonderful, wonderful piece. The asymmetry of this mm -hmm. piece is what I really love about it. And it's so sexy because it really has this dramatic fall yeah. to the ground on one side, as you can tell. And then it is hiked up really just under mm -hmm. almost like the, the crease of yes. the butt cheek. There's Still covering split, it. Yes. But you, if you want to show some leg, like this is the piece to do it in yes. with some wonderful bangles. Yes arm candy yeah. right uh i just love this one yeah and i had a tendency every time like i could be out shopping somewhere mm -hmm. and you remember how many times i would call you and be like i'd take a picture yeah. of something that i see at the store and <laughs> yeah i'd be like lex can you make this <laughs> like, and she'd be like mom yes yes <laughs> don't buy that i can make that real easy yeah don't even buy that yeah but how many times have i contacted you yeah. in the middle of my shopping and like lex, yes can you make this can you make well, that? and it gets harder to shop even for myself because every time I walk through what would be a favorite store, I'm just like, I, I can I'm make not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not, I'm not going to waste my money on right. that. So that dress was actually inspired by Middle Eastern caftans uh -huh. and the, um, the modesty uh -huh. that a caftan has. Mm -hmm. So in most of my earlier designs looks very similar to the caftan draped style. Mm -hmm. um, I was still playing with structure and contours of the body, but I wanted to try my hand at silks and, mm, satins. and satins and things that drape a lot better. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would come up with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love this one. Like any black dress that I've had, talk about um, um, LBD. This is the perfect LBD yes. to me. Yes. Sexy, easy, yes. comfortable. It's forgiving on the figure, yes. but still sexy. Yeah. So you can you can hide imperfections, yeah. but drama. And it's a thick satin. It's not yeah. polyester satin. Right. Right. It's it's not gonna cling to you. It's gonna fall right yeah. down, but still. Um, show your figure in the right and nice ways. And I love how that one, once it's, it's, off, the once it's off the shoulder, but the other side is really contoured and yes. sits on the shoulder, frames the yeah. shoulder beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, the next piece that we are showing you, she's actually wearing, show them the sleeve, show them the sleeve. Yes. Woohoo! These billowy gathered sleeves. Fantastic in this you would call this a, a kimono? Yes, it's a kimono robe. However, um, I have always been inspired by bishop sleeves. Yeah. And so instead of having a wide flared kimono sleeve that is traditional of kimono, I actually gathered the wrists to create the bishop sleeve. Yeah. So that kind of sets it apart as well as the quilted fabric that it's constructed from. Yeah, it's like a quilted honeycomb yes. print to it. Look at that. Can you see that there? Just beautiful, right? And it's very substantial, very heavy, mm -hmm. very weighted material. Yeah. Um, another design feature that I love that she just kind of came up with is this little, remember she said she doesn't like to carry <laughs> handbags when at all possible. So not only does this one have pockets on both sides. Yes. Yeah. There's so many pockets. There's so many pockets. <laughs> I forgot. So I there's a pocket many. here. Yes. Yeah. There's a, another there's pocket another here. And then there's one here. And there's actually an extra one. And then there's side seam pockets as right, well. Right. Yeah. Right. 
and then an extra one of these that but they're detachable yes. so you can take it off if you yes. don't want to if you want to wear one or both um they come off quite easily these were the original belt bags yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> before they were called the belt bag, the belt bag. <laughs> <laughs> and i just adorned it with these um mm -hmm save these these rhinestone the safety pins that i got off of amazon and we're not really going through the bags or the um the soles the shoe wear for today but just still looking at them um, as designed and styled uh in the videos here but because uh, i really do want to take the time to focus on her custom garments yeah beautiful 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 moving on let's see did you besides I haven't worn this one yet. No, you've worn the gray silver one, but not this one. Yes, so you saw, if you look at my um, outerwear yes. video, um, I'll, I'm popping up uh, it here up on the screen. You'll see the gray one exactly like this yeah. one, except the gray one does not have the bishop sleeves on it, right? And out of that video, I got the most feedback on that. Really? That one. Mm -hmm. So every coat that I wore in that video, mm -hmm. um, every outerwear option um, was all purchased with the exception of the gray, but the gray I got the most wow. feedback on, yeah. which was her custom design. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, beautiful, beautiful, right? Just stunning. Yeah. So I haven't had a chance to style or wear this one yet, because as you can tell, again, usually if she makes something for herself, yes. I'm like, Poor mouth and can you make me want to? <laughs> yeah, make me want to. So I haven't had a chance to wear this one. So styling it for you today will be the first time that I've worn it. Um, the next one that we're going to go through is this one. And mind you, these are not all of the designs that she has created. These are some that are the most memorable mm -hmm. and some of my most favorite. Yeah. So this one, do you remember where I wore this one first? my only time wearing this one it was a performance yeah uh-huh but i don't remember which the christmas concert in louisiana that i did that's what it was and you came with me that's why i thought it was the satin dress no it was this okay. one yes yeah yeah beautiful yeah. beautiful that one that was a hit it, it was a hit yeah. i got so many compliments on this yes it is a fitted um uh bodycon mm -hmm. stretch material very forgiving on the figure very flattering on the figure it has this like mock turtleneck mm -hmm. fit which is i really love the silhouette uh, especially uh, around the neck area of this one mm -hmm. and it comes um it's like a midi yeah so, so it's a midi yeah it's, it's it doesn't go all the way to the ground but mm -hmm. it's it's definitely a midi with the venting on the back right I'll pop some photos up of this one as well. Yeah. Just beautiful, right? I can't tell you how many sheets and bodycon type mm -hmm. dresses with the matching scarf or the matching um, duster. Yeah, duster. And belt yeah. that she has made yeah. um, for me and, and or for herself. Oh, this one also zips up the backs for easy access even yes. though it is has wonderful give and stretch to the material yeah. when i'm performing obviously my hair is generally going to be done already right. so she specifically put a zipper in the back for mm -hmm. me so i didn't have to worry about messing up the hair well and then some dresses just should not be pulled over right. all the time right so i wanted to make that that uh, convenient and try my hand at something new which was implementing a zipper well, that was your first. That time was my first zipper. zipper. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have um, this one, the birth of a nation. <laughs> this is a lace number that you got to put. Now it looks really simple. Let's see here. It is a V neck. Yes. Here, and this is a maxi. Mm -hmm. It's also forgiving on the figure because of the the really textured mm -hmm. density of the lace. And it's a stretch lace. And it's a stretch lace, right. right. So you can do this with like um, a full bodysuit under it. Yes. You can do it with a, a, a boy a panty. A boy short. Or yeah, a boy yes. or panty. Yes. Um, yeah, there. I, I love this piece. It's super sexy. This was my Carmen number because the 
dress that Miss Davis, who was my seamstress mentor, who taught me how to sew, she and I together worked on her Carmen dress, her dress for Carmen mm -hmm. for the stage. And the top portion of that dress was this material. Oh, that is so and true. And so we had so much, there was so much left over that I took the rest of it and created my very yeah. first dress by myself. So that's how this one came about. I should have pulled my Carmen dress out. So my dress for the <laughs> stage, I'll have it. pictures up here on the screen for you. So that you yes. can see it's this very same material mm -hmm. that it was the bodice top, area. But it was a tank. Yes. There weren't any sleeves. Exactly. And then the bottom was a full, the full flare, flare skirt of a, um, a gypsy. Because yes. Carmen, the character of Carmen is a gypsy. So it has a full flare of the Carmen like um, yes. a line with the frills and ruffles. Bleeding, yes. Yeah. The whole thing. Very dramatic. And very heavy. And it took us forever to attach both pieces All together. All the layers and the layers. Because there was so much and material she was using at the time one of the um industrial but very much original 1930s singer sewing machines and trying to stuff all the layers Under in there, there was so difficult but we got it and yeah. i'll make sure and put yeah. those pictures up here for you point taken <laughs> i forgot all about that yes. yeah i forgot all about that Okay, the last piece I think that we're going to show you, though we could stay here, we could stay here forever, yeah. but there because there's so much that she's done, and I really wish she were as active in sewing as she used to be because she was so stinking good at it, very good. And as you hold this side for me, okay. Do you see the drama of this? I saw this on Dita Von Teese. Yes. Dita Fontis is one of the biggest, best burlesque dancers in the world. She's right mm -hmm. there from Detroit, Michigan, but um, she is a star and a staple at like the Crazy Horse in Paris. I mean, she's made her, her rounds um, literally around the world as a burlesque tier, top tier, stellar, phenomenal burlesque mm -hmm. dancer. And I saw Dita Fontis in this skirt yes. and I was like, oh, <laughs> Can you make this for me? Yeah. And she was like, yeah, mom. <laughs> and we're both holding it because it is it's so, so heavy. heavy. I know. <laughs> and it is um high low. Yes. It's also when this high low thing was yes. in at the same yes. time. And she created this for a specific stage show she was preparing for. And I was like, well, if Dita can do it, I yeah. can do it. Too. And but and uh, the high low um Let's design hold it is so. very much needed in the burlesque style yeah because it's all about the legs yes yes and i don't know if you can tell here but it's so stinking heavy because it is made of this brocade yeah this really substantial heavy brocade material yes. and then this striped jacquard material and look at the layers and the pleats in this look just amazing and it's so substantial again. And you remember there's an underskirt to this yes, as well. That's to why it's so it heavy. To out. But the underskirt's not in there. Oh, it's not? No, I took it oh. out. Ooh, yeah. I took the, the underskirt out. Yes. I also had an underskirt for the Carmen dress as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can see here, I had to have two clasps mm -hmm. on here because it is so stinking heavy. Just a just a beautifully constructed garment even if i never wear this again this is um a piece to just keep like i wish i could have this framed this would be one one of the mm -hmm. do you remember when we went to the ysl exhibit when it first <gasps> we came totally did to colorado yes and everything was encased in frame and yeah. going up the escalator oh, yeah. to the event before we even got in the event yeah and that's what we had to look forward to that's what this reminds was that me for of. your birthday it might have been one of her usually typically if there's something fashion related yeah. going on because usually for every birthday the circus was her thing uh, until yeah. she turned like 11 12 years old and she was like mom i'm done with the circus okay. <laughs> i'm done with I'm the clowns on. i'm, I'm done, done with, with the clowns, clowns. <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving on to bigger and better things. <laughs> then we started doing our birthday excursions for like fashion events right. and things like that. Right. And um, YSL, Yves Saint Laurent, mm -hmm. 
was coming to the United States and their first stop was Denver, Colorado mm -hmm. at the Art History Museum. Yes. And we did that and the exhibit was spectacular. And yes, that's what she's referring to. Um, all of their, not all of them, but some of their key mm -hmm. um, designs were featured and encased in these beautiful glass frames mm -hmm. going up the escalators into the yes. exhibit proper. Yes. And it was stunning. It was a magnificent display of the works mm -hmm. um, and the, the legendary, the iconic Yves Saint Laurent. So yes, that is what we are. I should totally have this yeah. frame, <laughs> totally. But it's just stunning. It's beautiful. And yes, the back of it, Again, it's an, um, a high low, mm -hmm. so the back really does drag the ground, and then the top comes up, right. uh, the front just under just the, under the, the knee. knee area. But yes, I, I have a, a photo of us. You don't remember the photo of us? You're wearing this dress. It's when your hair was yes. a little longer. Yeah. Um, I, I was doing a recital, and yes. I wore this. Yes. It was so amazing. Yep, it was. It was so amazing. So yes, let's see. What and you, you wore red shoes. I sure did my satin, yep. red satin platforms. Mm -hmm. I'm popping up. It, it's here up on the screen, mm -hmm. on the screen. But yes, that is it. I think that's the end. This has been a long episode. This is the like twice as long, almost three times yeah. as long an episode as I've ever done for you before. But I really wanted it to be exhaustive <laughs> to introduce you to my love here. Love you. Love you. And to really celebrate her and her accomplishments and just the beautiful, um, flourishing, blooming young woman she has become. And I just couldn't be more proud of you. Thank you. And love you. And I really wanted to just showcase all that is great and phenomenal about you as a woman during this Women's History Month, because I know you have so much more to do and you're up for big and better things. Yes. We've been celebrating a lot lately because she's been yes. getting them back to back to yes. back to back yes. in terms of her real estate accomplishments. Yeah. And um, she's just been doing the doggone thing. And I'm so, so very proud of her. I know that I have said that word a number of times, but it is so incredibly fitting for where she is at this station in her life. And I couldn't be more happy for her. In addition, as I said, yes, every parent should love their child, but I like her. I like her. And that is what's most important. We were just talking about, I have a birthday coming up. So we were discussing, she was like, mom, what do you want to do? And I was like, I just want to go to church yes, and go eat some good food and just have some quality time yeah. Yeah. on that special day because I so appreciate being her mother. Also, because as a child of adoption, it means everything to me to have my blood mm -hmm. running through her veins and it um, validates my identity and my existence and my purpose here on earth. And it lives on. And it lives on. Yeah. So there you have it. My daughter, Alexis Asare Turner. I was so eager and excited to get into this episode that it, it dawned on me until what, four or five minutes into this episode that I didn't even say her name. <laughs> so yes, this is my daughter, Alexis Asare Turner on this episode of Suits Souls by EPP. And don't forget to head on over to Instagram and follow me there at Suits Souls by EPP. And if you have any questions for her or anything else that you'd like to, to learn about or know, please leave them in the comments. We're happy to answer those. If you want to see her back again, we can totally do that as well. But we do a lot together. We work out together. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we obviously hang together. We're foodies. We love to eat. We love some good cuisine. Mm -hmm travel. I haven't been able to get her to travel with me yeah. recently because of motherhood yeah. is mothering. Yes. Um, but yes, if you have any questions for her, feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll be sure to get back to you. But until we meet again, a bientôt music. Bye.